Okay. Oh! <laughs> oh, sorry! Oh. This is the third mystery box we've done in a row, picked up from the Southern Invert Show. And this is one I'm actually most excited for opening. And it is a £60 gimp box from the Spider Shop. and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Stop staring at me! I don't know why I stare. <laughs> so, the last video we did a Portsmouth £50 box, the video before we did a £30 Spider Shop box, and the reason these gimp boxes interest me the most is because you just don't have a clue what's in here. There could be true spiders, there could be tarantulas, I'm going to assume that in some cases you can get uh, other invertebrates with missing limbs, but as it says seven legs on here, I assume they're all spider based. But it's cool because their value is, is lessened from a business point of view if something is missing a limb, plus your value is heightened for a mystery box, meaning you could get some whoppers in here. Now there were a few gimp boxes, so it's not to say we've picked up a good one. You don't know, it was what, five or six there, something like that? Yeah, but by the time we were saying goodbye to everyone, they were all gone. Yeah, they were. People love these. I love these. We nearly even got a second one, and we would have probably had not caught the eye at the very end on the £100 box. So, no idea what to expect in this box. We're also kind of adding up how many duplicates we've got from our four mystery box series. So we've had two duplicates so far. Danielle is very new to spiders, if you're new here and didn't know that. So this is kind of exciting. I've been keeping spiders for years. Danielle has only recently got her first. So we get to join, whoa, we get to join her on her journey of spider keeping and see how good an educator I am. I'm better at educating kids than I am adults. So I may well fail her, but we will try and see. I'll try not to cut off my fingers. Now we do a take it in turns on the box so we will do the same again number wise for 60 pound box i'd say five or six but being a gimp one i don't know it could be more could be less and her phone is going okay we may have to cut again in a moment danielle got a call saying that they're going to call her back so well, we'll do this the best we can who went first last time you can go first this time. i go first this time you went first two times in a row <laughs> didn't you <laughs> okay i can see there's a round pot I'm going to skip the round pot. I'm going for straight for a sling pot, I think. Starting off small. Mm -hmm. So in here, Behamori Gimp. It's a dinky oh, little the... Brachypalma Hamori. Oh, I was about sling. to say that. Because I knew what it was. <laughs> well done, yes. So that is one of the ones Daniel was after. I've already had a Brachypalma Hamori um, Gimp. It was four times the size this one was. And she has completely regenerated her leg. It took two molts for her to fully regenerate her leg. She kind of had a spaghetti leg for a little while. Oh. Um, and a molt after, she's now fully developed her legs. And she's probably coming up to a sub-adult stage. So to have a homori, these are very slow growing. Okay, yeah, she's too. probably going to be like twice that size in another year. And twice that size isn't very big. So, unless it's a boy, may grow quicker, don't know. Okay, your turn. So we've, got, we've checked something off Danielle's list of what she wants to keep. That's really cool. And it's not a duplicate from before. Oh, yes. I'm happy uh, with that what's one. What's that? A huhini. Pretty much. Kilobrachis huhini. So, Kilobrachis. Asian. Fossorial slash semi-terrestrial. They are fossorial spider, but they can live in slightly shallower bur burrows than some fossorials. Good size Kilobrachis Huahini. It's been on my want list for ages. It's a very common Kilobrachis in the hobby. Um, I only have had a one centimeter or one to two centimeter sling, and that's the only one of my Kilobrachis slings that ended up just dying on me. So to have one at this awesome juvenile stage, you can see where the leg's missing just here. Yeah, I did notice. So these are very defensive spiders. They're old world, so they don't have the urticating hairs to kick at you. So this is one that I'm going to have to deal with. And this is a keeper. 
So if you haven't been watching this series, some of these are going for sale, but not this one. I am pretty chuffed to have one of these. What I like about them as well, killer brachies tend to have the longer abdomens rather than the more rounded abdomens that you get in certain other species. Mean. Mean, mean bugger lugs right there. So we've got two amazing spiders already. So far, this is my favourite box, I've got, to, I've got to say. Is it my turn? Yes. I'm just going to have a little feel for how many I can feel. I can feel at least two more, three more. I think it's three more, but I can feel... I'm going to go for the other little sling pot, all right? Leave Daniel the bigger, more exciting <laughs> ones. Ah, another one I want. What's it? D. diamantinensis. I had an adult female that paired with Beth's male, and she died um, a few months later. I think it was a molt Beth told me she died in. So Beth kept hold of her. She's an amazing keeper, so I know it wasn't anything of her fault. But an adult female, D. diamantinensis, to have one back in a collection is amazing for me because they're beautiful. They're blue, they're vibrant, they don't get too big. They are just amazing spiders, really amazing spiders. So this is definitely a keeper box so far. I'm really happy to have one back. Sometimes when I have a species, especially one that's slightly higher price tag like that, that dies as, as an older one, it discourages me from buying a new one. Having one gifted to me would be amazing, or having one in a box like this is amazing. So this, this, this is the reason why I sometimes like these mystery boxes, because it stops me having to pay out that money specifically for that spider that I'm disheartened about, but I get it back anyway. So that, that worked really well for me. This is, a, this is an awesome box. If, two round ones. Two round ones left, okay. Careful. Oh, I have never in my life owned one of these. Albus Driatum. I think so. Okay, we had to cut again because Daniel had her phone call back. So yeah, where she said M. Albus Driatum, that's right. I had to look this up because the M wasn't matching in my mind and I haven't kept quite up to date with uh, the, the taxonomy side of the, of the spiders lately. And so it was Haplopelma, then it was Syriopagopus. Now it's, got to look again to know the, say the genus, Melopius or Melopius? I would say Melopius, Arbostriatum, which is the Thai zebra. So this is uh, a Thai species. It's a fossorial, so it lives deep underground, okay. okay? So although I'm not big on fossorials, this is a beauty and it's a spider I've never ever kept before. So at the minute, it's going in a keep pile. Whether we do sell this one next year depends really on kind of how much we see it in terms of feeding and stuff probably. If it's literally going to be a hole in the ground and we don't even see it feed like um, an O. aureo tibialis that I've had before, then I may pass her on but she is really cool looking. She is cool. High strung tarantula, so defensive. We've got one left in the gimp box and there is so far nothing here that has in any way, shape or form, disappointed me. So, is this the last one, would you say? I think so, I didn't have I'm gonna have around. a little feel before I pull it out. Yeah, this is the last one. And it is a, I know what that is. Yes, this is what I wanted Danielle to have from the show, starting off her tarantula journey. A Phonopelma calcodes, the most docile tarantula you are probably gonna ever get in the hobby not to say that one will be because yeah. each tarantula can have its own personality but if you want one that's pretty much 90 percent gonna be easy to look after not a problem if it crawls out of the enclosure or runs up your arm or whatever really unlikely to bite can happen but unlikely a phonopelma calcodes it's pretty. Proper beginner tarantula and of a really good size as well. So I don't even know how to rack this up in terms of what they're worth. I mean, these have gone up in price for this size. Now in the UK, you're looking at probably around the £45 mark. Those ones, uh, I have no idea, but they're probably going to be around the £40 mark for that size. These about 
25 quid for that size. These are about 20 pound slings. Um, and this is probably about, for that size, probably only about a tenner for a sling, a lot more as they grow up. So we've got really amazing value from that box, I would say. I mean, you know, just two of these is already more than the value's worth. So I'm chuffed to bits. Yeah, I'm happy. So with what's that. your favourite from that box then? That one, the Hamori. The Hamori, just because you wanted one of those. Yeah. yeah. So that's your favourite. My favourite is the Killer Prakis Huahini. And now we've got to give these some tender loving care till they molt out and grow their limbs back. So Kilobrachis molt reasonably quick, a bit slower now, she's that size. Kalkodis may take a long time, Hamori may take a little while, but as a sling it might start going a little bit quicker. Didi Mountainensis are reasonable speed. No idea about the Albastratum, not a clue. So, <laughs> uh, but in my experience, a lot of Thai species grow reasonably fast, but if somebody wants to correct me on that in the comments, please do so. So yeah, there we go. The third one in our mystery box series from the Southern Invet Show, and the one I'm most happy with personally. Which one are you most excited with so far out of your the three mystery boxes? I don't know. I like them all. You like them all? Well, yeah. it's all a big learning curve for you, isn't yeah. it? All of it. So we'll leave it there. Next week is the very last one of this little series, and it is our one hundred pound Portsmouth Tarantula mystery box. Will it, in my eyes, beat that of this gimp box? I don't know, that's gonna be pretty hard. That is my favorite box so far. It really, they're either hit or miss with these gimp boxes, and I thought that was brilliant. So. Oh, good job, I picked it up then, isn't it? It is, you picked a good one. Well done. <laughs> well done, sport. <laughs> you gay. <laughs> right, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, Bye. take care. Bye-bye.